Hey guys, Becky with Design Bundles here, and today I'm really excited to bring you another Cricut tutorial. Today we are going to work with handwritten notes and recipes, and I have a lot of tips and tricks to share with you. So let's get started. All right guys, so here we are in Design Space, and I just wanna give you a little bit of background before we get started. Um, what we're doing is we're working with a handwritten recipe. You can use um, a recipe, you can use a handwritten note, any anything with handwriting on it, but you do wanna try to find things that are written on clear surfaces. So for example, one of the downsides of handwriting is a lot of times we will write on um, lined paper or index cards or recipe cards that have lines on them. So understand that to really be able to work with one of those, you need um, some sort of, in my, in my opinion, you need some sort of designing software. Now, the other downside is that, for example, I have a recipe of my grandmother's carrot cake. And, you know, it's really something that we want to, and, and it's not the only recipe we have scanned. But when we scan them, they scanned in as PDF files. So that's not a file type that I can open with Cricut. So you'll see if I go to upload, it'll tell me these are the uh, file types that I can use, JPEG, um, GIF, PNG, bitmap, SVG, or DXF, right? So the first thing that I need to do is convert that file into something that I can use. Um, now, I'm not affiliated with any website that does this in particular, but one that I have used in the past for a lot of different conversions, and you might find useful. I just went to Google and I searched PDF to PNG converter and I scrolled through and this cloud convert is the one that I've used before. So I'm just gonna open it up. And of course this has a lot of different um, file types that I can convert to. But in particular, you see it's already set PDF to PNG. So I'm gonna select my file and this should be in my downloads. And then I can just hit convert right there. So basically what it does is it uploads it from my computer and then it will convert it and then I will download it. So what I want to urge you guys is anytime that you are downloading, um, you want to make sure that you are um, running some sort of antivirus software. And I just feel that way for any website, not this website in particular. Okay, so there we go. So it is converted. So I'm just going to choose download. And then another uh, website that I want to introduce you to is this one here. It's pick SVG. So now I'm going to take that um, image that right here, the new PNG file that I have. And if I scroll down to the bottom, you'll see it gives it to me in an SVG format. Now, um, it doesn't look like this one is real ideal. It does depend on the quality of the image that you're uploading. This PNG file is um, a little on the lighter side, but you can also come in here and you can really work with the details. So that one got a little bit better. You can also choose the different filters that are applied. So, so far I think that one is probably the best. Um, and it, it is legible. It is something that you're going to be able to read, okay? So then I'm going to come down here and I will download the SVG. Another thing that we can do, just one more website to look at. So this one in particular is Pixlr and um, We'll just use the Express and we can open up the um, image that we downloaded. Not, not the SVG, but I can open up my original, well, my converted PNG format. And let's open that up in here. And now, you know, this is something in particular that a lot of you will have native programs on your software, um, but this one is just for if you don't, and all we wanna do is, um, a lot of times I'll switch over to black and white, and then I can also increase some of these filters to try to darken up that print. Actually, if I can find the contrast in here, there we go. So if we can get it a little bit darker and a little bit sharper. Okay, so let's save this. Again, it's gonna download to my computer. This time I can choose the format that I want. And now I can come back over here to my pick SVG and start with a better quality picture. And it's going to give me, typically speaking, a better quality result. 
So it's coming in really small for some reason, but um, that usually works good for me. This details strong and filter the invert filter number three. Um, and it's looking really good. I just zoomed in using my browser a little bit. So let's just go ahead and download the SVG and we will pull it into Cricut Design Space, okay? So now back in Cricut Design Space, I'm just gonna go to Upload Image. And this one right here, even though it has a weird name, that's gonna be that um, SVG file that I downloaded. And I'm just gonna hit Save, click on it and import it into my canvas. And those are the results that we have. So let's talk about this for a minute. So I, I'm very happy with these results. Um, that was an old recipe in light handwriting. And so what we did, and this is the process that I, that I recommend. Take a look at it. Is it, when you scan it in, what format does it come in at? Do you have the option to import it as a PNG or a JPEG or a similar image file. If you do, start there because it'll save you a step, okay? But if you don't and it scans in as a P, uh, PDF, that's okay. Then that's when you will convert from PDF to a PNG. And then take a look at it again. And do you need to darken up the handwriting? If you do, find a software, I showed you one that's web-based in particular and it's free, uh, the pixlr.com, P-I-X-L-R.com, and darken up the handwriting, okay? And then from there, you're gonna visit a third website. I know this is a lot, I hope you guys are taking notes. From there, you can visit a third website, um, the picksvg.com, and convert it into an SVG format. Now, there is the option, you know you can import an image straight into Design Space and it will delete the white background for you. But the reason that I don't do that with these recipes is because with handwriting, I'm left with a lot of little pieces on the inside of these letters that I would have to go in and click on in order to make them transparent. So I don't do that for um, anything with a lot of handwriting. So that was three different websites potentially. Um, so if you miss those, then rewind the video and uh, take out your notebook and write those down. So I call it a three-step process because I need to convert it into a PNG, then I need to usually darken up the handwriting and then convert it into an SVG. And then once it's in here, you're good to go. All right, this is an SVG image. You can size it and use it any way you want. Now I do want to say that um, I would do some test cuts because you're going to want, first of all, I would not cut this in adhesive vinyl. Okay, so if you're wanting to cut this for a vinyl project, look for a really nice thin heat transfer vinyl. Um, I won't say that, that any of them work better than the other, but try to find one that's gonna be really thin and it's going to handle detail well. Try to stay away from thick HTVs, like you're not gonna use glitter, you're not gonna use flocked, and try to stay away from heat transfer vinyl that is also stretchable, because sometimes it will stretch instead of cut when you're trying to cut this small detail. All right, so those are my tips for trying to find a heat transfer vinyl. I would actually um, probably try to use this with some sort of printable iron-on transfer or you know some water slide paper, something like that. So there are definitely a lot of options if you're not comfortable in cutting this in vinyl. But if you do want to cut it in vinyl and um, you want to use heat transfer vinyl, then this is how you're going to get it done. So once it's in here, just make sure that you attach because that's going to keep it all together. And then you can click over. Well, let's see. I want to size this down so you guys can actually see. There we go. If I click over to make it. And now it's telling me, it says, hey, this is a big project. That's because this handwriting and all these individual pieces have a lot of um, detail and nodes for the software to interpret. Okay, so it is gonna take a minute, but eventually it will click over to the um, maker preview for you to be able to see what it's gonna look like and how big it's gonna be on your cutting mat. 
All right, so there we go, just to give you an idea of how small the text can be. So definitely um, the shorter the recipe, the better. <laughs> um, especially if you're first starting out, I would start out with um, handwritten notes and those sorts of things. Um, just something that you're gonna have larger text on because if you look at some of these letters and some of these, um, like the I, the dot above the I, um, you know, these these letters are about a third of an inch tall and uh, and you could really have a hard time cutting and weeding those out depending on your material so just a just a little tip if you can and then of course um, from here you can cut it on anything that you want and if you are going to set this up to print you know then in um, design space itself you would just switch over to your print fill and then that way it will um, print instead. So if I click over to make it, well, now it's too big to print. There we go. If I were to click over to make it, um, this is how you would print it out. Now, keep in mind, I would not do this as a print and cut. Okay, this is just how you would print it if you were gonna wanna use it. They make printable inkjet transfers for light fabrics, and they also make the water slide decal paper for hard surfaces. So um, you could print that and then trim this out and your background would be transparent. Now I haven't done a video yet on the um, printable transfers for light fabrics, but I do have one on the uh, water slide paper if you wanted to put this on like a tile, like a ceramic tile to be able to give as a gift or to put up in your kitchen or anything like that. So definitely lots of uses for being able to manipulate these types of files in Cricut Design Space. So let's go ahead and wrap it up. So guys, how did we feel about working with our handwriting? Now I know, I know what you're thinking. Becky, that was a lot of different websites. And you know, if you have programs that take care of this, then by all means, you can skip over those steps. The people that I'm talking to are people who have not been able to connect the dots on getting from point A to point B, and this is one way to do it. This is a workflow that will literally walk you through scanning your image, all the way through converting it to be able to bring it into Cricut Design Space in a usable format. Now, I know you're excited to put that to good use, so I won't keep you any longer, but guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. I do always love to hear from you, and make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. That way you get notified for all of our videos in the future. Now guys, again, I appreciate it. I'm gonna wrap it up. We'll see you later.